All right, welcome back. You're watching Ways. What are you saying? Now, no fewer than 53 spouses have been allegedly killed in Nigeria by their partners from November 19, 2017 till date. This statistics is from the Daily Trust. Joining us now is Ajijola Omobolanle, who is a professional counselor, NLP practitioner, and a passionate child rights advocate. Omobolanle is passionate about spreading awareness against sexual and all forms of gender-based violence and concerned about the total well-being of children. Now remember, you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways or send an SMS to 0818038466. Three. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. So now we are discussing a very serious issue. Obviously, you've been up to date uh, with the news and just open punch newspaper page four and five. There's always a story of domestic violence. Yes. Why is there such a surge in domestic violence lately? Uh, well, let me start from the top. Um, from what we have gathered, um, domestic violence has increased because of something called the um, frustration aggression theory. Hmm. <coughs> what exactly is that? So this was um, coined in um, 1939. So it says when someone is frustrated repeatedly from reaching a goal, anger is almost always the expected outcome. So hmm. say you have a wife that is at home, she has dreams, she has aspirations, and her husband keeps holding her back. Mm. And let's face it, nowadays there's news everywhere. You can do more, you can be more, you can try. There's nothing you cannot achieve. Mm -hmm. And your husband is telling you, oh, don't do this. I think of recent, there was a story in, um, on Facebook of a woman that wanted to travel abroad for her master's. Mm -hmm. And she was the one funding the entire project. She was going to fund traveling for her husband, for the kids. But her husband was adamant. You either pick the master's or, or the you, marriage. Or the marriage. Oh dear. So she was asking for advice. So in case, so like, let's put that on the table now. Say, okay, no problem, I won't go. I would stay at home. And then maybe two years later, the husband now says, I am traveling hmm. and I won't take you and the kids along. So resentment builds resentment up. Resentment builds up. So hmm. gradually over time, it leads to anger. And let's say one day they are busy arguing. No, you can't travel, you can't leave me. And it, it blows up. But situations like this, does it make it okay to indulge in domestic violence? No. There's never any reason. Domestic violence is not accepted at all. So, so mm. let, let me come in there because right. we talk about acceptance. And mm. I'm reading a report from World Health um, Organization. Okay. Uh, social, societal acceptance of domestic violence is high in South Asia, yeah. first at 47%, yes. and then about 38% in Sub Saharan mm. Africa, where Nigeria is a part of. So, question is why? does our society accept this? Why is it that, you know, we always make an excuse, there's some cultural norm that sort of backs why, um, you know, wives get battered or uh, okay. oppressed or whatever? What do you and say? You know, for our own side of the country, we, we, we live in a predominantly patriarchal society mm -hmm. where it is believed that violence is a way for a man to correct to love to or better or show love to his wife. So you have that on the table already, and then there's the element of you know religion. Mm, I think somewhere in the northern state law, there's a particular line there that states that's that Sharia law. Yes, okay. and the, the problem with that is it's a mis it's a misrepresentation of a verse in the Quran. I'm a mm -hmm. Muslim, so mm -hmm. I understand. There's a verse there that says you can admonish your wife if she's misbehaving. Okay, but. In essence, what it means is correct. it does not mean beats. It's correct. Say, like no, you have a small violence, handkerchief. No. Mm -hmm. Say, just the edge of that handkerchief, you just used to tap her hand that you are not behaving yourself. All right. Or maybe just no. a light tap on her shoulder that, ah, uh, ah. Uh, so you're instead not of an inch, we're we'll taking mm -hmm. like nine So yards. there's a lot of misrepresentation there, and that's why they've coined out the law that, okay, you can't beat your wife. Mm -hmm. So that's why, in most cases, it is accepted in some parts of TIV beating your wife is considered as a way of showing love. Wow. Mm. Wow. So, so, so my, question, my question is, um, is how, how, is there any legal mechanism in Nigeria presently to help victims of domestic violence? 
Well, I would say we are working on it. There was a article in Guardian Woman, I think that was 2016, where um, a lady, Mercy Mackinde, she mentioned that um, domestic violence has been grossly underreported. It has been, um, I've forgotten most of the words, but bottom line is it's underreported, it's not always documented, mm -hmm. and in most cases, they do not do adequate investigations. So half of the time, most of these cases are either taken to alternative um, resolute dispute. Uh -huh. Family, yeah, involved. And family court, or alternatives, alternative dispute resolution. But the thing there is it does not address the issues. And a lot of people, because they are not sure of what to do or how to document abuse, if you cannot prove that your husband beats you, Hmm. If it's because at the it's end difficult. of the day, it boils hmm. down to your word against his. At hmm. least last year, I handled a case, it was almost the same thing. Hmm. So, getting proof is a major challenge. It's a major but challenge. But abroad, they don't wait for proofs, they just sweep in. Not necessarily. Most of the time, they get the man out first. That's they, the put, they isolate them, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Restriction. Mm -hmm. they restrain. And, well, you know, that is in the case of when they are both living together. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what? Say, a couple now they are still dating and she's complaining that he's coming to her place he's okay. calling her incessantly he's always by her door he's stalking okay. her mm -hmm. they will tell you to wait until something happens no okay well you know what well, let's bring religion no, into wrong. this issue talk about you said something about um leaving spouse and obviously um i'm a christian i don't know what the quran <laughs> says about it but in christianity uh it frowns against divorce or you know leaving your husband and mm. because of that a lot of people who find themselves in such strong domestic <laughs> so uh, violence or abuse they're like to stay. I, I can't leave my husband my religion is, is against mm. it so it becomes a huge contender with their freedom or with you know them opening up how do how people like this how, How do we balance? work with them? What do we do with them? What, what's the way forward? Well, just like I mentioned of recent, um, for people like that, what they do is alternative dispute resolution. They sit the husband down, they sit the wife down, they ask them, may we know your issues? So in most cases, like I'm also a counselor, so in mm -hmm. most cases when you sit couples down like that and you ask them various questions, you might eventually find out the root cause of who is to blame, who has issues, who needs further counseling to deal with these underlying issues mm -hmm. to stop. But what well, if he doesn't stop? So mm -hmm. my, in fact, what so if he doesn't stop? That's <laughs> assuming that they've come to reports. But from what yes. you're saying, so because my religion doesn't allow it, I'm probably not even going to talk about it. How do we even start to get people the to sad talk part more? Of it, and, and that's the sad, that's where if, even we as counselors, that's mm -hmm. where our hands are tied. Mm -hmm. You cannoot help someone who doesn't, doesn't, doesn't want, want to be helped. Absolutely. To be helped. So when a client comes to you and tells you she's been abused and you're like, okay, I need to report this. And she's like, no. No, please. You have, at every step of the way, we work with what the client can, wants. Exactly. Absolutely. We you cannot outside overstep, of, except for we only have three rules that we would go beyond. Oh, if the person is being harmed, mm. if the person is going to harm someone, or if there's a possibility that someone might lose their life then we have to report no matter what. Mm. But if the person is still saying she's fine, she can manage it, she doesn't want to talk, there's really no. But how do you help it. people that are victims, you, especially friends, family members, and they don't want to talk about it, how do you help them? Like I said, you have to wait for the person. Wait. Absolutely. When they're ready to talk. Until patient. they get killed. So I, I, I have some interesting stats, and you know, in line with what you said about um, some cultures just allowing it. So, it's a bit different from the stats I have. So for 2% of um, people in the North are uh, more um, exposed or to the prevalence of, they call it int intimate partner violence. Yes, I don't that's, know if that's another name for right, it. Right, okay. Yes. So for 2% in the North, 29% in the Southwest, 78.8% in the Southeast, and 41% in the South South. So for me, I was like, okay, the Southeast, almost 80%. Does that have anything to do with the the ego of the yeah <laughs> you know it's the culture <laughs> it's a culture thing, for them right? it's a culture <laughs> thing you know the, um, there was an article that i read yes. um, they did like a like um a survey so to speak right. about um emerging prevalence of mm -hmm. domestic mm -hmm. violence and they chose people from those states right they had edo they had abia right. and all those states so most of the wives in this case it was even the men hmm. that were being abused 
So in most of the cases, then the questions that were asked, the wife said the reasons why they beat end up beating their husbands is because most of them come home drunk. Some provoke the wives. Wow. Some there's infidelity, and then there are some that they just don't want to drop any money for any reason. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, are there other forms of domestic violence? Yes. That we should know because most times people think it's, it's for instance yeah some people would say uh, my husband is abusing me or my wife is abusing me and they're like ah did they lay hand on you what did they do to you please of go course. back to your wife go mm -hmm. back to your husband mm -hmm. you know so are there other forms that we should apart from the physical know? that we yes. all see in yeah. the news almost every other day there are different types mm -hmm. there's the verbal mm -hmm. and then there's the emotional or psychological one mm -hmm. So like um, what, we, what we as counselors always agree on is that the emotional one is much more worse. It is. It gives a permanent Because it's, it's in stages. In most cases, the emotional eventually leads to the physical. Mm. Because when the person gets tired of calling you all sorts of what names, about? stupid, lazy, use, um, useless, yeah. you are worthless, you have no use to me. When, after a while, the victim begins to develop a thick skin. So when the abuser talks, I mean, there's nothing new. And then so the person feels another way. messing with mm -hmm. their mindset and their psyche. So the physical is, yes, you see the scars, but when those scars heal, what is on the inside is a lot more worse. Mm. So what you're saying, it's, it could translate to mental health issues. Yes, a whole lot. person ends up with depression, ends up with anxiety, there's self-esteem issues, there's social issues. The person doesn't want to interact. There's a whole lot. I in, think there was... And in a society, sorry, in a society where if you told somebody that they're abusing and it's mental, they probably think that you're not serious, hmm. you know. How can you complain? Block your ears. I'm also Yoruba mm. and it's a yeah. big deal. Yeah, yeah. and they're like, yeah, they tell you stuff, they they tell you stuff like uh, a boat is, what's that quote again? That a boat doesn't sink except water gets inside mm -hmm. and all that. And we forget like that we're humans. And sometimes the words... It gets it. Yeah, yeah, worse than actual physical exchanges, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know, it also comes with um, our beliefs growing up. Sure. As so long as someone is not harming you physically, physically then, mm, it's fine. then it's something you can Just still work out. That's the general belief. Mm. Mm. So do you think there are ways to prevent domestic violence? Like well, ways to prevent the trigger, yeah. right? Basically, what we have um, realized is for women, most times is always economic independence. Mm. Dependent factor. Mm. Because majority of the survivors we have did not want to leave at some point in time because they have nowhere to go. They have nowhere to go. Mm. True. Very there true. was That's the issue of how would I look after myself? How would I look after children? children. 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 Yes. House so in those, uh, in those that made the instant decision that I'm leaving mm. were the ones that had either a nest egg or they had a paying job. Mm. 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 And even within the society now that domestic violence is getting you know, a lot of attention, yes. if the wife has money of her own, so to speak, mm. and she wakes up tomorrow morning and she tells her parents, you know what, I'm leaving they'll be in support. <laughs> but the moment they know she does mm -hmm. not yeah. have money, hmm. the general idea is they would advise her, please like stay. Six months, pack enough money to then leave. <laughs> so you say no, so the majority say continue. Of the, the majority of cases that come reported to you, are the women financially independent? Or? No, no, it's both oh, sides it's of the story. Mm -hmm. Wow. Both sides of the story. What so about illiteracy? Is it a trigger? It is a big trigger. Wow. Mm. Because you have probably a husband that's maybe married young and then he just suddenly decides that I've grown in leaps and bounds and my wife is still in the same place. Why should she still be in the same place? And you suddenly start getting angry, forgetting that. Liability. Mm -hmm. As they say, that she word. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not the same. So growing up, I had a friend like that, that her mom married the dad when she was young, so she didn't mm. eventually further her career. All right. And then eventually when he stayed, his career stayed progressing, family stepped in and were like, she can't be following no you longer. around. She's no wow. longer on your level. Wow. So to speak. Right. You know what? Let's let's step aside for a minute. We've been talking about women um, as regards to domestic violence. And it's true that in a patriarchal society like ours, women are usually like the first victims of domestic mm -hmm. violence. But there is a minority that we often forget. Absolutely. And that's the men. the men. So let's talk about men and domestic violence. Obviously, there was this... Um, 
in the news, the lady that was sentenced to death yes. um, yeah. because she killed her husband. Let's talk about men in domestic violence. Are, are they talking? What is the statistics that we have Just like men? What is going uh -huh. on? Just like you said, we're in a patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. And the downside for men is they are supposed they are, they are supposedly seen as exactly the king the king so, so they're not that, yes. supposed to speak even so if it's happening they are not supposed to speak they are not supposed to it's on head of you know say mm. my wife is beating me and they ask mm. you ah, ah. Hmm. are you not the as man of the house are you not the man of the house so most of the men that do speak up amongst their friends either get laughed at mm. or they get made fun of so the sad that. part of it is at the end of the day men are still pretty much silent victims a lot of them don't want to open up. A lot of them don't want to talk about it. And the funny thing, the thing with not wanting to talk about this thing is like, um, say you have a bucket of water now, and then you have a basketball, and you're trying to push it into mm. that bucket of water. You keep pushing, you keep pushing, you keep pushing. So long as your focus is on that ball, mm. the ball stays in the water. But the moment you lose focus, focus the ball Flips. bounces up mm -hmm. and hits you in the face. Oh, so pretty wow. much that's how domestic violence or even sexual abuse happens. But you know what? I often ask myself, I mean, I try to picture it. I've never seen, um, I've seen cases of women being abused. Okay. But I try to picture a man being abused. <laughs> It's, just, it's, it's not, just, it's not, it's not, no, I don't easy. know. I mean, so can you give us yeah. forms of male abuse? Like if you can paint a picture or tell a story, just let, bring the reality of it <laughs> home to us. A lot of people will tell you, a hey, man, how will you abuse a man? Is he, is he, if he raise one hand and slap you, how, like, a lot of people don't believe men are abused. They, they, you know, just like I said, because of that notion that men are, stronger sex, mm -hmm. they are stronger physically, they are stronger emotionally, in most cases, it's not always true. Mm -hmm. There's this documentary on um, Netflix, um, The Mask You Live In. Mm -hmm. It tells us about how, you know, boys and boys and men, so to speak, have been conditioned to, to behave a certain way, way, even though they do not fit into, into that. that box. Mm -hmm. And same with women. So you have a, a man that is extremely sensitive, He's the touchy feely type, and then he marries the strong, aggressive woman, street wise yeah. woman. Yeah. And, you know, he gets to a stage where he says A, before he has said B, he gets a slap across the face. Mm. Oh dear, wow. And he's such a good man, he doesn't want to hit mm -hmm. her back. And almost oh, wow. immediately, because uh, the thing with abuse is it has cycles. There's the tension building stage, mm -hmm. and then there's the explosion stage and the honeymoon stage. So, just like the one I explained now, that was in quick succession. Mm. The tension stage was probably when she was talking, he was talking. The explosion stage was when she, you know, hit him across, hit the, him face. across the face. And immediate, almost immediately, the honeymoon stage kicks in. Oh, I'm so sorry. I won't do it again. I won't do it again. I'm so, and she kneels down. Ten minutes later, they're at the dining table. Oh, that's and, like and there, it's like this food is salty and this, the fork flies Starts across again. the room oh. and hits him in the face again. And almost immediately she apologizes again. So the cycle keeps going on and on. And on. So mm -hmm. if we say men do not get abused, it's, it's a lie. It's just it's not reported. So at what mm -hmm. stage do you think a victim should walk away? Do you think once that your life is being threatened? Mm -hmm. And once your emotional well being or your so stability. So when we say life is being threatened, mm. when exactly how, after you've how been beaten you know? the first time or after yeah. when is life That's the being question. Yeah. Is the when first is, time when or the, the line? The thing there for everyone is you cannot measure it. Hmm. And that's why I said at the end of the day, the difficult thing with domestic violence is at the end of the day, it all rests on the individual. Hmm. To make that decision. When the person has gotten to that point that they say, I can't take it anymore, I'm tired. Hmm. That's when the person eventually Open up. Or they get seriously injured. For mm. some, it might just be that emo constant emotional abuse. And basically, like, I think I'm going crazy. Yeah. Mm. I need to leave before something happens. Mm. But most times, what we often advise is when it gets to that point where you're beginning to have thoughts of, what if I just carry a knife and just you know, mm. stab him? Or you start, having, uh -huh, you start having funny thoughts that you know that one day you might not be able to control it. At that point, we you advise step away. Hmm. You know, like you said, for Christians now that there's it's marriage is, uh, I'll be sorry, divorce is frowned no, on. Yes. For Muslims, there's something we call a waiting period. If you get to that point where you both feel 
tensions are high, you cannot, you know, live with each other again. I think the waiting period is either three to six months. I'm not really sure again. It's either three to six months. So okay. They advise you both step away from each other. Take a break. Take a break. I think that makes sense. So if after that break you feel yeah, okay, you just need that exactly, separation. we've worked through our issues, yourself. then you can come back together. Well, if after that you now see you can't work through it, then for the best of everyone, it's advisable, advisable. to just separate before either someone loses their life or you end up injuring the children. Because at the end of the day, while we are all talking about domestic violence, domestic violence, it's the children that are the end receivers. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I do have, I was uh, having a conversation with a friend um, a couple of days ago when the death sentence, the video on Instagram about the lady being mm -hmm. um, sentenced, wow. when it went viral. <laughs> so um, my friend we were discussing and he said that perhaps if they make um, domestic violence punished like a capital offense, instant death sentence, maybe, maybe we would see a decline in in you know situations like that what do you think the thing is you think it's <coughs> big enough like any form of domestic <laughs> violence any form of it it's gathering, gathering the evidence is always the exactly problem. because mm. i think people may abuse it and yeah then, you know, somebody will post it and people will be dying for no reason mm. <laughs> that's one mm. then one. again it's one thing to pass a law it's mm. another thing to understand someone's experiences growing up you say a child that grew up in a family where he saw his mom get beat up every single day. She would get beaten up, she would get stripped naked, thrown out of the house. And that child grows up and is beating his wife the same way. And you're telling him, this is not normal, you don't do this. He would just be nodding, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Once you're gone, he's telling this one is talking right. rubbish. This is what I saw growing up. Hmm. And my mother took it. Uh, exactly. And my mother took it. And she's still here today. So she's still normal. with my dad. So why normal. can't my wife take this? So if you are saying capital offense, most mm. people get, they now get smarter. Absolutely. Yeah. If you watch films that, you know, people do outside of, you emotional. see where, <laughs> mm -hmm, it's either you now get, hmm. the wife gets hit where it will not be noticeable. Show. Or in places where it will heal quickly, or the or wife would abuse it, mm -hmm. as you have said, yes. or uh -huh. cool. or yes, or you now get people now falsifying stories yes. just because they want to get someone yeah. get rid in of trouble. Their husband, so. so it's a mm -hmm. it's a very tricky one. It is. It is. Wow. So that's why we do more of raising awareness now. It's a start. It's a little start, but it's something. something. Okay. Yeah. Another question I have is: Do you think that culture? has a direct link to this. And from the standpoint of, we always focus on bringing up girls. As a lady, you should do this, be submissive and all that. But I find out that we don't do that to boys. So they grow up to be what they are. So they just naturally, the society teaches them to subjugate women. Do you think it's a direct link? Mm, I would say, Maybe that was then, because now there's more of intentional parenting, there's emotional intelligence now and all that. So you have parents now balancing it, as opposed to our own time, where you would have men. So during our time, uh -huh. there was a direct link. Yes, during our time, there was a direct link. When men were brought up to believe They're macho. you had to be waited on hand and foot. Come hmm. on, I'm the stronger <laughs> sex. Why should I enter the kitchen and cook? But the thing there is, it's not all the men in our own generation that were brought up like that. At least Are you I, sure? Yes. Of course. At least well, I know of men, men that cook. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. They do. But I, what I'm uh -huh. saying is they see violence as a weapon to subjugate their women. And like I said, it's because of probably because of the way they've been brought up. That's what I said. That, that, is what is, that is the norm. Hmm. So all. unless... You will get to that point where we keep that. That's why I said the only thing we've been doing so far, or most of what we've been doing so far now, is raising our awareness. That that might have been the case then, when you guys were so 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 age. But now, it is no longer acceptable, because one of the major reasons why we have these issues is because of gender inequality. Yeah. Mm. 
gender, gender inequality. So that's a big issue. That, that's where yes. that's where this whole thing stems from. Yeah. Men are stronger. Men are better. Women are supposed to be subservient. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Don't have a voice. Right. That's that. Okay. But, so guys, don't forget that you can send us um, a message on on the on the screen right now. And we got one um, that says, "I am currently living in hell. I don't know how to start all over again. Please help." And this is anonymous. Usually, when you get messages like this, they are anonymous. So let's um, address this. Please help. Help. So in cases like this now. Um, we still do not have the full picture. Unless the person is talking in terms of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Because some might tell you they are going through hell. They are either being physically abused, they are either being sexually abused, or emotionally. Mm -hmm. emotionally abused. So until we can narrow down exactly what type of abuse this person is going no, through, no, 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 no. then we can advise on the various ways the person can go about it. Mm -hmm. It's either if you've gotten to your breaking point, step away, or if you know that you still love this person at some point, you feel that, okay, there might be a solution, then yeah. we ask you both to come, sit down, we talk okay. about it. All right. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Omobolanli. You've done a fantastic job, you know, breaking things down for us and, of course, offering help and solutions. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Don't forget, guys, this is Ways and still on domestic violence. We have our second guest joining us right after this break. Please stay with us.